And this video is dedicated to my friend Aditya, who loves having fruits in the morning, especially classic sweet fruits, seasonal fruits, melons, watermelons, mangoes. So Aditya, I hope you really watch this video and anybody else who loves fruits as well. In this video, we're going to cover why people are saying fruits might be bad for you, why they are not bad for you, should you eat fruits or should you not eat fruits. My name is Junior Gupta. I started research in diabetes back in 2008. And along the way, I've done a lot of research and I've learned about cardiac disease reversal and also obesity is not about calories but about hormones. I have presented at a lot of the top hospitals in Delhi, Apollo, Medanta, Escorts, and I've presented at conferences as, as well, talking about reversing diabetes with diet. Everything I do is research-based, so whatever I'm going to talk to you about fruits today is going to look at glucose data and the like. So we are different than pharma companies. We are going to talk about reducing medications and removing medications through food. At the end of the day, whatever you watch on my channel, be responsible for your own medical decisions. I'm just giving you my opinion. So stay tuned and watch this video. Fruit has amazing benefits. But as our science is growing, we have learned about negative effects of fruits as well. And in this video, I'm going to help you understand the positive from the negative in a quick way. Now, fruits can be broken up in two main categories. For this video, high sugar fruits where you've got mangoes, bananas, pomegranate, pineapple, even red apple, and then low sugar fruits. So a very good example, high sugar, low sugar. Other low sugar fruits are going to be blueberries, strawberries, most berries, raspberries will be low sugar, kiwi is low sugar, some citric fruits are low sugar. If you taste a lot of sweet, it's high sugar, if you don't taste a lot of sweet, it's low sugar. So grapefruit is a good example, sweet lime or mosambi is another example. Now low sugar fruits are extremely beneficial, blueberry has a lot of antioxidants, strawberries have vitamin C. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, but again, I would recommend a green apple and maybe half an apple. In summer, oranges are great or change of season time, vitamin C. So you've got a lot of benefits to have from fruits. In high sugar fruits, they're really tasty. I mean, I love a good mango. I love a good pineapple. They're sweet, but they also cause weight gain. Particularly what I want to talk about is having these fruits in the morning with breakfast. If you're visiting Thailand, you're going to have lots of fruits at your breakfast buffet. When you eat fruits on an empty stomach, your sugar goes sky high. Even someone like myself who is non-diabetic, if I have a, a few slices of watermelon, there's a good chance my sugar will go to a pre-diabetic level. So pre-diabetic is sugar over 140. That is high in a non-diabetic. Along with the sugar spike, you also have an insulin spike. So early in the morning, you've just started your day, your glucose goes sky high, you get a massive shot of insulin in your body through your glands, and now you're building up insulin resistance, which means right away, your body goes into a fat storage mode. So insulin is the fat storage signal as well. So right away, first thing in the morning, you started telling your body, start storing fat, and you're likely gonna store fat the whole day. If you didn't have fruit in the breakfast on an empty stomach, if you had something else, and then you had a few strawberries, you didn't make that big signal to your body. So I really want you to control the signals you're giving to your body, because if you wanna stay fit, you, you don't wanna trigger the body to store fat, right? The second thing about fruit, which you may not know about is that the sweet in fruit is different than table sugar. The sweet in fruit is half fructose and half glucose. Table sugar is all glucose. So fructose and glucose, they are two different things. Fructose, I can only metabolize in my liver. Glucose, I can metabolize from my fingertip to my toes. My whole body 
can metabolize glucose. So if I have something sweet in the morning, let's say some sweet yogurt uh, with sugar, I can metabolize that with my body weight, which is around 70 kilograms. But when I have fruits, I can only metabolize that with my liver, which is let's say two kilograms. So just imagine the difference of having 70 kilograms available versus two kilograms. Now, you may say, what's the big deal? The big deal is when I see high fruit eaters, people who have come to me who used to eat a lot of fruit in the season, mango, pomegranate, banana, pineapple, watermelon. You know what I find with them? I find a fatty liver because all the fructose is being converted into fat and the liver can't produce it out fast enough and it's just depositing in the, glu fat in the liver. All this fat is depositing in the liver and it, you're getting a fatty liver. And now your whole metabolism is getting affected. So fruit, we find a very strong correlation between sweet fruit and fatty liver. I want you to not go there. How should you enjoy fruits? Now we all want to enjoy fruits. I want to eat this mango right after this video, but eat in proportion. So first things first, have half the mango, don't have the whole mango. If you want to have the pomegranate, have a third of the pomegranate, enjoy the taste. Don't use it to fill yourself, it's a high sugar item. Switch to low sugar fruits if you want more bulk. But the other way to eat it is have it in a smoothie, in some proportion. If you add steel cut oats to it in the smoothie, you'll, you'll have some fiber, have it with some fiber. Have it in salads. If you sprinkle some chopped apples on a salad, that's fine. If you sprink sprinkle some pomegranates on a salad, that sounds yum. Uh, eat it. Another way is to just eat it with nuts. So sometimes I'll just have strawberries with cashews or almonds or walnuts or blueberries with walnuts. This is an excellent snack. But you want to have your fruit with fiber, with something dense. If you're making a smoothie, throw in some salad leaves or spinach leaves, have a high fiber green smoothie. These are some tips to just awaken your mind on how you should be eating. Lastly, for parents and for how to feed your kids with this fruit. Let them enjoy it. But I got a big case of mangoes right now and that's too much for my kids. They shouldn't be eating so much mango. Maybe they should have over the whole season seven, eight or ten mangoes over summer. That's it. They shouldn't be going nuts with mangoes and amras and mango ice cream, let's control it down a bit. Uh, we see a lot of childhood obesity and from my end I see a lot of chi children whose uh, puberty and uh, all of that is going haywire because of just hormones going crazy. And we don't, sugar is a big, big, big part of that. Sugar and processed food. So, you know, control the sugar. Have it in proportion. If they're at a growing stage, they can have, this is a giant banana have three quarters of this banana in a smoothie in the morning. Do not have it with born vita. Born vita is full of sugar, but have it with some nuts, have it with some protein powder and, and water, or they might want some milk. But for us, be mindful. You're not a growing stage anymore. You're not a young kid who's growing in height. You want to change your diet and I want you to know why. I hope this video helped you understand some more clarity behind fruits. If you have any more questions, please put it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit like, please subscribe and stay healthy with Life Heal.